Hi friends, welcome to day 15 of Advent. Day 15 is another viewer question and today's question comes from Vegan Bunny Mama on Instagram and she wants to know what the book I'm writing is about and its genre. Bringing in the hard questions today. So my current project is Alex and I have talked about this book a lot on my channel pretty much the whole time because I have... have I been working on it the whole time I've been on the channel? I mean definitely longer. I've been working on it for about 15 years or so. I was in college when I started. Um, not, you know, fully working on it, but I spent several years theorizing, world building, and doing some different things, and just thinking about it on and off here and there, you know, a couple times a year. I think, like, the first idea for the story happened when I was in college, which was about 15 years ago. And I did some, some brainstorming and some theorizing back then, um, and every once in a while, uh, I would pick it up and, and kind of, you know, go over some things and, and add something to it or take something away from it and then, you know, put it aside again. I would say probably, probably 10 years ago was when I actually wrote the original first draft. And back then I didn't really know what I was doing. Like I wrote a first draft and I went through and edited some things as far as like grammar and punctuation, but I didn't do any structure editing. And then I was like, cool, I wrote a book, I should query this. So I did. That went well, as you can tell. And uh, it went about as you could expect it to go when you, you know, query a first draft. Um, but again, didn't know things. I started doing more research and, and development and kind of put it aside for a while, worked on some other projects. And then probably right around the time I started my channel, about four years ago, I brought it back and was like, all right, I'm going to edit this beast. I'm going to take on the beast and I'm going to edit it. And I've done some major revision passes since then. But about a year or so ago, I realized that it really just needed all new world building, all new plots, all new magic system. And so I've spent the last year really building up that background that it needed. And I think it's, I think it's harder to take what you have and morph it into something that it needs to be than it is to just come up with something new. Because you have to like, you have to find the, the space between this is what I want, this is what I've already been in love with, this is what it needs to be. Like you have to make those things work for you um, because it's hard to let go of the things that you already love and to mesh everything together I, it is, is very difficult. I have found like I'm there. So I, I think I've, I've got a new outline, I've got new world building, new magic systems. All of that is new. We're ready to go. Cool. As far as the distinction between YA and adult, I think it does lean more adult because it is a darker theme. It does have a lot of war and battles, things like that. Not to say that those don't exist in YA, but I definitely take a more gory look at it. There's more blood, guts, that kind of thing, which is funny because I hate gore in movies, but here we are. It doesn't have adult content as far as like romance wise it's not like a smutty book so that's okay and while I do feel like part of the story is Alex growing as a person I don't feel like that is necessarily why exclusive because I'm a 33 year old woman and I can say in the last three or four years I have grown as a person so to say that discovering oneself finding oneself growing as a person is something that is exclusive to YA is completely inaccurate and false and quite frankly harmful to people over the age of 20. Okay, that's an industry thing and, and that's neither here nor there. I don't control the industry. If I did, we've already discussed how I feel about ratings and, and, and how we age 
read books. Okay, moving on. So, adult fantasy does not exist in our world, exists in another world with humanoid shaped but not humanoid actual humans. So, we have different species. Um, we have like a magic species, a non-magic species. We have a sort of fish species, half fish, half human, but not mermaid species. They're not mermaids. They don't have tails. They have legs. So like they're not mermaids. They just can breathe underwater, yo. Okay. That's a, sh a genre. What was the other question? What was the actual part of the question? What is the book about? Cool. Got this. I know this. I've rewritten this multiple times. I know what it's about. So the story follows Alex, which is why the story, when I talk about it, is called Alex, because that's how I talk about my projects. It's whatever the main character's name is. Alex. It's about Alex, who is a mid-twenties age young woman. She is part of the Camadri, which are the original species of the place that they live. So they are humanoid shaped, mostly because I'm unimaginative and boring as fuck, and they have magic. The majority of them have a magic. Alex specifically has an elemental magic. She can control lightning. She also can do a psionic magic. She is able to can like make force fields with her brain. Not like actual force fields, but like she can prevent someone from penetrating her brain with their psionic powers. She has a brain shield. A brain shield. <laughs> brain shield. She's also a naturalist, which is basically like our version of kitchen witchery or hedge witchery, depending on how you look at it. So basically they use herbs, gemstones, uh, things from nature in order to basically manifest things for themselves. So they have like elemental magic, psionic magic, they have physical magic, so like telekinesis, things like that, and they also have naturalists. Alex doesn't have any like physical magic, she can't like move shit with her brain, but she does have a elemental, a psionic, and a naturalist knowledge. You don't have to have magic to be a naturalist, you just have to have the knowledge. Yeah, this has been a really long explanation of shit, so anyway, and <laughs> Is this why you don't ask people what their book's about? Alex is a middle 20s aged warrior and she has lived in kind of a very peaceful society for the past 12 to 15 years. When she was a lot younger in her around the age of 11 or 12 there was a major war in their country and throughout the world as she knows it and during that war there was the opposing side was able to basically do whatever they wanted to do because it was these three sisters who for some reason no one could harm other than Alex's father. And essentially what it came down to at this time point was that he could not kill them. He had tried and he wasn't able to but he was able to hurt them and his magic was able to affect them when no one else's could for reasons unknown. And the only way for him to stop them was for him to basically use all of his magic in order to uh, freeze them in time, make them immobile for a time period. So he did that, which killed him. So Alex's dad died when she was very young and the countries all signed a treaty basically saying, you know, that the sisters army would stop doing the things that they were doing, which was enslavement and murder and rape and pillage and the other countries would leave them alone for the time being. They would release any or they would release any slaves that they had back to their home countries. They would do, you know, they wouldn't continue doing the things that they were doing. They would stay out of the other countries. They would basically encapsulate themselves inside their own country and behave themselves. And the other countries would leave them alone and forgive them for the things that they had already done so that they could stop war and stop more things from happening in the future. Signed a treaty moved on. So our story starts with Alex learning that someone may actually be defying the treaty and the story follows her going through this adventure of figuring out 
if the treaty's being broken, if it's not, what that means for her and for her family and what it means for um, what her father did because part of the treaty is that no one is supposed to try to wake these sisters and she learns that someone may possibly be trying to do that or possibly has already done that and so it basically follows her trying to overcome this system that basically just sees her as this young warrior and she has to overcome the royalty and the uh, the people who are overseeing all of these things that are putting blocks in her path in order for her to do what she needs to do to figure out how she can stop the sisters from being resurrected. It's a really long-winded explanation of a book that, I don't know, did I explain it at all? I'm not really sure. So I hope that I answered your question. If not, I'm sorry. I'm very rambly today. Uh, let's go ahead and pull today's creator spotlight and see who we get and talk about something other than my brain thought processes for a minute. And today we get Rainy Days and Stormy Nights aka Brianna. Brianna is primarily a reading channel. She is one of the few people on YouTube that is specifically a reading channel that I've actually become friends with since joining YouTube, which is interesting. I post more booktube content, but I have more authortube friends. Um, you've probably heard me say that before. It's totally true. Um, and Brianna is exclusively reading, so being friends with Brianna is interesting. Uh, also, I love her. She loves whales, which is really cool. <laughs> I know that's a weird thing, but if you like whales, Brianna talks about whales a lot, and she likes to read books about whales, like actual informative nonfiction books. So there's whales. She also does like recent reads, so she doesn't typically always do like a monthly wrap up, but she'll wrap up you know, when she's got, you know, eight to ten books to talk about. She is just like super nice and super sweet and I love her. And she hasn't been super active on YouTube lately, um, but she is still active like on her Instagram. So I still get to see plenty of Brianna, but I do highly recommend her channel. That you check it out, especially if you like whales or uh, romance. She reads a lot of romance, especially um, not straight white person romance. So if you like romance novels, check her out. Maybe you'll get some new recommendations. That is all I have for today. If you don't want to miss any more of the advent videos coming up this month, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!